from Pacifica, this is Democracy Now! They weren't interested in whether the loans would be paid back. That was somebody else's problem, translated through these credit derivatives and other unregulated instruments. They just wanted to do the transactions, make as many of these mortgages as they could. Every time they signed somebody up for a mortgage, they brought huge amounts of money in, and that's the way they profited. American Casino, a new documentary, investigates the roots of the subprime mortgage meltdown and tells the stories of African-American families who lost their homes. We'll play highlights and speak with the filmmakers, Leslie and Andrew Coburn. But first, one year ago today, U.S. and Iraqi forces arrested an Iraqi photographer working for Reuters. Ibrahim Jassim has been held by the U.S. military for the past year without charge. We'll speak with the Committee to Protect Journalists. All that and more coming up. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The Central Intelligence Agency is refusing to release a series of key documents about its secret prison and torture program. The announcement came in response to a court-imposed deadline in a case brought by the American Civil Liberties Union. The CIA says releasing information on its so-called enhanced interrogation techniques would jeopardize national security by exposing classified intelligence sources and methods. The refusal comes one week after the Justice Department released a previously classified CIA report on torture at overseas prisons and launched a probe into the conduct of CIA interrogators. The investigation's been criticized for focusing on low-level operatives and not the Bush administration officials who authorized the practices the operatives carried out. The documents that the CIA wants kept under wraps could provide a wealth of information on the Bush administration's role. The documents include President George W. Bush's September 2001 authorization for jailing CIA prisoners abroad, cable between CIA officials and the secret prisons and their superiors in Washington, and memos by CIA lawyers on the operation's legality. Alex Abdo of ACLU's National Security Project said, quote, the Obama administration must release all crucial documents that would shed further light on the origins and scope of the Bush administration's torture program. The American public has a right to know the full truth about the torture that was committed in its name, he said. In Afghanistan, at least 23 people have been killed in a suicide attack on a mosque near Kabul. The Afghan deputy chief of intelligence and at least two other government officials were among the dead. The intelligence chief, Abdullah Lagmani, was the bomber's apparent target. The private military firm hired to guard the U.S. Embassy in Kabul is being accused of gross negligence and inappropriate behavior in carrying out its duties. According to the Project on Government Oversight, or POGO, more than a dozen embassy guards have come forward with allegations against colleagues employed by Armor Group North America. Armor Group protects the U.S. Embassy under a $189 million annual contract. The firm's deal was renewed in July despite a critical State Department review of its work. The whistleblowers say Armor Group guards have conducted unauthorized, armed, nighttime operations in Kabul, violating contract rules. The guards dressed in traditional Afghan garb and hid in abandoned buildings. The guards were also said to have filmed and photographed themselves carrying out lewd behavior that included urinating on each other at alcohol-fueled parties. On Tuesday, State Department spokesperson Ian Kelly said the new allegations will be investigated. Secretary Clinton has been apprised of the allegations in these documents and has directed the Department uh, and the Office of the Inspector General to take uh, uh, appropriate action. Uh, and let me just say that the, uh, the, the Secretary and the Department have made it cl clear uh, that we will have zero tolerance of the type of conduct that uh, is alleged in these documents. The allegations come as a new congressional study shows the U.S. is relying on contractors in Afghanistan at an unprecedented rate. A Pentagon census last month revealed contractors account for 56 percent of the Pentagon's force in Afghanistan, outnumbering U.S. troops 74,000 to 58,000 by the end of June. The Congressional Research Service, or CRS, says the figure moves up to 65 percent if averaged over the past two years. The CRS says 16 percent of contractors in Afghanistan were performing security duties as of March before President Obama's deployment of 21,000 additional troops had begun. 
The figures come amidst news the Obama administration is planning to vastly increase its reliance on contractors in Afghanistan in order to minimize the size of a new troop deployment. The Los Angeles Times reports the Pentagon's drawn up plans to add as many as 14,000 combat troops in Afghanistan by having them replace support units engaged in non-combat duties. Under the plan, the U.S. would avoid a major troop increase by replacing the non-combat soldiers with contractors. The outsourcing wouldn't completely offset an expected troop increase, but could reduce its size. A recent CNN poll, meanwhile, shows 57 percent of Americans now oppose the Afghan war, an 11-point increase from the end of last year. ABC News, meanwhile, is reporting the Obama administration's extended the private military firm Blackwater's contract in Iraq. The State Department will reportedly continue to use Blackwater to transport embassy officials around Iraqi areas. The contract was due to expire this month. Its extension is said to be indefinite until another deal with the military firm DynCor is enacted. The news comes just two weeks before the second anniversary of the Baghdad killings of 17 innocent Iraqis by Blackwater guards. In other Iraq news, new figures show violent deaths have reached a 13-month high. According to the Iraqi government, 456 Iraqis were killed last month, including 393 civilians. It was Iraq's deadliest month since July 2008 and the highest civilian toll since April of this year. In Israel and the occupied territories, two Hamas fighters have been killed in an alleged Israeli attack on the Gaza Strip. They were apparently trying to plant landmines near Gaza's border with Israel. The deaths come hours after a Palestinian teenager was killed in an Israeli military shooting in the occupied West Bank. The victim, Mohammed Riyad Nayef, was 15 years old. Another three youths and an ambulance driver were also reportedly wounded. The ousted Honduran President Manuel Zelaya is in Washington, where he'll meet Secretary of State Hillary Clinton Thursday. On Tuesday, Zelaya criticized the Honduran coup regime for blocking his return and going ahead with an election campaign. La democracia ha sido violentada en el país. Democracy has been violated in the country by a military coup supported by business interests. Not all, but certain sections that manage the economy of the country. In an effort to hold on to their privileges, they don't care about the development of the nation. I ask the international community, are you all right with the elections like those being held in Afghanistan, where every day people were killed by assassinations and bombs? Is that what we want for the Americas? Elections of blood? and fire at gunpoint. President Zelaya's meeting with Clinton comes days after a State Department review advised that his ouster be officially declared a military coup. The move would force the Obama administration to cut off as much as $150 million in funding to Honduras. Clinton has yet to issue a decision. In Chile, a judge has ordered the arrest of 129 former security officials for human rights abuses under the Chilean dictator General Augusto Pinochet. The move marks the largest ever mass arrests and in cases investigating crimes committed during Pinochet's 17-year rule ending in 1990. The suspects all worked for the DINA, a secret Chilean police agency linked to scores of political murders and disappearances. Meanwhile, in Guatemala, a former top military official has become the first person to be convicted of committing disappearances under the Guatemalan Junta. Former military commissioner Felipe Cusinero was found guilty of the forced disappearances of six peasant farmers in the early 80s. Cusinero was convicted before a packed courtroom filled with Mayan villagers and relatives of the disappeared. Hundreds of thousands of people died under the Juntas, most of the killings committed by the Guatemalan army. In Ecuador, a lawsuit against the oil giant Chevron for environmental damage in the Amazon jungles being threatened by allegations of judicial corruption. Chevron's been sued for dumping billions of gallons of toxic oil waste into Ecuador's rainforest. An independent court-appointed expert has recommended Chevron pay up to $27 billion in damages. But now Chevron's released video, it says, shows the judge in the case, Judge Juan Nunez, meeting with an alleged representative of Ecuadorian government political party and two contractors. Chevron says the video shows the judge discussing ruling against Chevron as well as a $3 million bribe for contracts involving another company. Chevron 